like I told you, this is the last. Hello. That would explain why. Not anymore, I'm not. <laughs> ah, there we go. Well, I'm here. I made it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Phoenix was the first one here. I don't know if I can hear sound alerts right now. Sound alerts is telling me that it's set up to work. I'm also, I don't normally stream on this. So, we're having a legit pro streamer dream here. Nothing but the finest. But, oh, I heard the alert.
Thank you for the 40 months, Lamp. Enjoy the queue. I did. I did have some queue, and it was fabulous. Oh, I heard. There we go. Yes. Three years, buddy. I think just stuff was, you know, stuff was turned up and turned down and turned on and, you know, I have that effect. So feel free to replay that Mexican pizza so we can, uh, so we can enjoy it. Hype train is closed. <laughs> Barely even started, but thank you. Uh, Phoenix is here. Waddy's here. HB! HB is here. I stepped out of the room to get a beer, so I didn't hear a sound alert. Didn't hear a lack of sound alerts. I heard that. I heard the. Uh, I heard the Rick Flair. So I think we're good. I think we're golden now. I think we're good. All right. Muted. 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 No one. You stream on your own. I'm streaming on my MacBook. And uh, except I'm using iPhone, my work iPhone. As a webcam, so the picture quality is a lot better. As I hope it is. That's a little weird. I'm not going to get up on this there again. But as long as everything holds it steady here, we should be all right. I'm still just kind of figuring out the best way to. Then, I'm, then I got my phone as a stream monitor so it's kind of cattywampus here so my laptop's here i have my work iphone sitting on top of the ice bucket where the people are i want to look where the people are actually let's let's unplug that as well that might help turn this off But thank you, Teresa. Thank you so much. Puerto Rico, enjoy the queue. Thank you, Crystal Lamp. Picture really good. Cool. Alert on that end. Hmm. Do you remember to reapply it on screen? Follow the instructions. Follow the instructions. Maybe they don't apply as such near this close to the equator but i did i really did and i tried but i still burned <laughs> dang it why do you got a job today which is very which has very flexible hours and low pay so i'm going to take the training and have as a side job probably and keep looking for something full-time heck yeah everybody round of applause for wadi Your voice is breaking up a bit sometimes on my end. Yeah, it's a little... I'm on the corner of the building, so my connection isn't totally strong. Let's see, what else can I try to do here? Maybe turn that TV off. I don't know why that's still on. There we go. Try to navigate with that single button. All right. Whether that'll help or not, I don't But the speed here is okay. Pretty okay, especially for hotel Wi-Fi. So you are close to the driver on Facebook. <laughs> in maybe probably well from that picture from way back when that was like it was front to back top to bottom, it was stone turned. But 
for today, my front part seems to be okay. It's both. I was sitting facing this way, and the stun was here. So it really my my back that got blasted. But like, but I had the strongest SPA I could, which was fifty. I probably should have maybe gone to another store and tried to find something stronger. But and I even read all the instructions that said apply, wait fifteen minutes before you then go out and do the thing. So I did exactly that. Reapply after eighty minutes or after you know swimming and whatnot. So I did that. I went out twice, and I lathered myself up both times. But, oh well. Maybe I just, maybe it was just a matter of not being able to get my back as good as I was able to get everything else. I also have, I have a spot, like, say this is, say this is my shin. I have, like, right here, my shin. Spot on my shin. I was like, why does my shin hurt? Oh, skin burn. The hat of reference. I think I've still got that hat somewhere. Well, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've seen it. That hat, actually. The hat in question, which is going to... You and Rick and Tom are the only ones that recognize it. That hat I actually bought at... Um, the Animal Park at Disney back in 1999 on a high school choir trip. And Rickshaw Tom was there too. SPF 50 is really all you need anymore is just overkill. Okay, well, good to know. Hand marks. It's still so too on cute. When I'm putting on my own sunscreen by myself, I end up with finger marks on my shoulder blades showing where I could and couldn't reach. Well, that's because I because I knew the back was going to be a factor, I got this stuff, which is got this stuff, which is like the aerosol spray. So you just like, and then like, you know, for good measure, you can rub it in. But I got this because I knew I would, I wouldn't if it was regular sunscreen. There's no way I would have been able to get my back. So, so let's know about. You can even put the background music. Oh. Barely register. I want it to barely register. <clears throat> but. But yeah. I mean, I could try, try to show you, but with this lighting, it's not going to be too accurate. Oh my god. Yeah. You gotta do better than regular when you're closer to the equator. And I did try. I did try. Fault or not. This damn Anglo-Saxon glow in the dark. Eternally pale. Skin, God. I burn easily enough to where I generally won't go outside without a shirt and just apply sunscreen on any exposed skin. You know, I probably should do that with how fair my complexion is and having 50% redheaded jeans and everything. Oh well. And I use like. They use like half the damn can. I was applied it quite. I was like, "Is this too much?" Wrong. Rich out. Tom just chipped through this. You missed your face, didn't you? My face doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's a little rosy, but no, I I didn't. Besides, on my face, I wasn't facing the sun either. But you know, that compared to my face.
We do what we can. I have to turn down the resolution on my monitor here. That's some of the juice. I don't apply on screen every day. I use it when I went to a pool or a beach or something, even though I'm also fair slack correctly. You don't either. I also like a lot of my work is done in a room without any windows. So in my day to day life, I don't see the sun much. I don't see the sun much. <clears throat> Audie's in a trouble right now. Well, nothing exciting. I try to get something exciting. Um, I checked out the stores within like a block here. That was like, oh, there's, there's some eyebrow raising stores on the same street that I'm on. There's a tobacco shop called Condom World. As a bouncer, right? Uh, like going into Walgreens and CVS, seeing big displays just chock full of every color of the Don Q rainbow is just a little bit of magic. And compared to, you know, it's a, it's a little that costs a little more than it did when we were here back in 2007. But when then. Yeah, I think back in 2007, it was like eight bucks a bottle. And right now it's it's 12. It's 12. So how many bottles you bring in bags? Zero. I can't I can't get through security with it. So I've just had to admire from afar. If I was traveling with checked luggage, which would go against the philosophy of culture than maybe I could have. <clears throat> but I thought I didn't know I was gonna end up here <laughs> when I left. So there we go. Wait, how do we well we had we had checked luck before, that's how. But I don't and I'm gonna like I assume Mason in the check luggage he just brings some cue home. Although there are a whole bunch of fancy flavors I've ever seen, and it's uh, a little more easy to come back prepared, prepared to bring the you home. And tool isn't bad, yeah. What if it's seal isn't broken? You can get it in the airport after the checkpoint. I'll look. I'll look. In the duty free, maybe, maybe. Well, I can't make any promises, but we'll see. We shall see. So, uh, I think this is kind of going to be a story time stream, <laughs> and just have a chance. Um, yeah. Let's this is a heck of a couple of days. It feels like it's been like weeks at this point, honestly. I've been running and flying and somehow things are working out. This whole thing, whole, this whole ordeal started right after our last stream on Friday. Shower, packed up everything. I uh, left the house around 2 a.m. It's a little later than I wanted to, but it's okay. And then I managed to do the whole drive uh, to the airport in Boston without making any pit stops or anything, so that was cool. I get my car parked, and as soon as I get out, I get a notification that uh, my flight's delayed. 
So I felt like I was cutting it a little close being there, you know, because I wanted to leave about an hour earlier than I did, but I didn't. So I was like, oh, okay, well, that's not bad. It was like it was like a 45 minute delay. That'll be OK. That'll be OK. So I, I get to the shuttle and get to the terminal and never been to this airport before. <laughs> I think I'm following the signs, and I get in, and I get into the, the big expanse of terminal. After walking down with like an absurd long hallway through a parking garage, like through another parking garage, I'm like, this seems really weird, but okay, maybe this is why this is why the economy lot where I park the economy lot. You really gotta hold it. So I get in there, then I go to. Um, go to the security line be clear but apparently there's two different clear paths and the first one I went to was the wrong one so then I went to the other one and then they all get confused as to why only half my ticket shows up when they scan it and then finally they're like oh you're on a your your plane is in a different terminal so apparently walking down that long ass hallway was wrong. So I had to backtrack. Um, at this point, that delay was, uh, I'd used up the benefits of that delay. So I finally get back, find where I'm going. And uh, security was not free. There was like three people in front of me. So no worries there. along the way. Yeah, this one was like, this was expansive. It had, it had three of those like, those moving treadmill things, and each one was, each one of those was really long. So, but, you gotta get the somehow, I guess. So, get through security, find the terminal, and they just things get delayed. And then it finally gets to the point where, like, I'm questioning whether or not I'm going to make my connection. Because this first flight is just from Boston to Philly. So, like, 11 o'clock rolls around. And um, my flight out of Philly is supposed to start boarding at 12.25. And we have, like, an hour flight there, which means um, I'd have, like, I would, if, if, even if the, if, a, if the plane lifted off right then and there, we would probably get to the terminal when I was supposed to be boarding. So it was not looking good. And then, then, then it got real fucking weird. Um, the pilot comes on on the intercom and says that because nobody on this flight checked any bags the plane is out of balance and he needed 24 people to voluntarily check let them take their bags out of the storage over out of the overhead bin and just gate check it under the plane And um, only 12 people volunteered. So that wasn't going to do it. So he reiterated, we need 24 bags or we need eight people to get off the plane, to volunteer to get off the plane. No more bags were volunteered. Um... Two people volunteered to get off the plane. So they tried to make it work with 12 bags minus, uh, you know, moving 12 bags and taking off two people. Still wasn't enough. So pilot comes back on and is like, at this point, I'm, I'm not going to ask. We're not going to make anybody leave. 
We're not going to make anybody off the plane. But we're going to, we're just going to come through and we're going to take bags. We're going to give you a ticket. When we get there, you can take your bag. Stuff. So, starting the back of the plane, they were going bin, 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 and grab it because they had to eat bag, they had to put a bag on, they had to get the names, everything in them, they're checking the counter, give them the slip and everything. So, and each one of each one of them, you know, probably two, three minutes, they had to do that 24 times. So, again, time is just cranking on. And then one old guy gets gets to the point where he's had enough and says he wants to get off the plane. So he got off the plane. Okay, it wasn't going to change anything. So, um, I'm going to try to keep up on <laughs> keep up on my chat here as well. Um, no Puerto Rican energy drinks. I remember they had their own version of Red Bull. Um, Cyclone. Yeah, this is a uh, made in Austria, and this has more shell base than Monster. It's it's crazy. Um. Anyway, I digress. How many bullets? We already read that. Already read that. Speak of Philly, just realized the. Intro, it's always saying it's shot tonight. Did I volunteer? So, knowing how quick my connection was going to be, I really could. I also, my bag, then they weren't taking every bag either. If someone had, like, one of the roller bags, those were the ones they were taking. My, the bag I'm trapped, I've done this whole adventure with is an over the shoulder messenger bag. It's kind of like, just a laptop bag with a little extra storage. So that really wouldn't have made a difference. And besides, mine wasn't in the bin. Mine was under the seat in front of me. Because I because it's it's the size enough to be called a personal item. So uh -huh. So finally they get enough bags moved. They weigh the plane again. Everything's finally balanced. Perfectly balanced, all things could be. The house was happy. So, we get in the air, we get to Philly, and as I um, turn airplane mode off, I get an alert that my flight out of Philly has been delayed. So, so that was good. But everything is just running run behind this point. But I mean, what can you do? Behold to the sky and the planes, the tools, and the people. Get out of the book into Philly and get down to, down to Raleigh. And he went there around either five or six. No, it was around five. Whereas I was supposed to be there at like 1.30 originally. So, yeah, it was, it was about four hours of total delay in there. So I get over to uh, where my rental car is. And this was, and then it was in one of the slowest lines I've ever been in in my life. It, there was nine or ten people in front of me and it, and it took a whole damn hour to get through. So, that was fun. But they gave me the key to a real Malibu. And pushed in my coordinates for Greensboro. And I was like, okay, never driven here, never driven this out, never driven this car. And I'm a lot of hours behind where I wanted to be. That's fucking sad. I had to learn as I went, like, all the control, and crew control, and everything, and yeah. It's free at that point, so that's when they say, yep, I'll do it. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's not like anyone who's being charged for it. And, and again, we could have saved so much time if people were just like, fine, because you get it right after anyway. But whatever. People are dumb. Get dad, get dad. Going up in chat as a friend, get dad. Yes, I am in San Juan, Puerto Rico right now for a little while longer. <laughs> I, uh, oh, we're, we're getting to the end of this and how I finally, and how I ended up here. So. And <laughs> jealous. Whew. What's crazy is the day you flew out, Kurt Angle was going to come to Albany the same day because of the delays he had postponed to signing. Oh, man. Yeah, the rental cars, they have to show you the car and then, no, they didn't do any of that. None of that. It just, it was at the counter. It's moving really just Moving really slowly at a really slow pace and having five counters and only two people there and they're running three different rent agencies out of this one building. So it was put this one building but Abe's and one of the other companies. Regarding you booked for one of those three people, you had to go through that same profile line. So as opposed to just being one place, like standalone bird mortar or something. They don't do that anymore. Yeah, also, they're, they're very firm about it. Like, when you return the car, you leave the keys in it. Or we will charge you $450. And then there's a little, like, you know, they gave me the, the form and the keys were in the car. So... Yeah, but I mean, it was fine. Um, but I got there. I got to. I got my way to from Raleigh to Greensboro, and the whole it was like seventy-seven miles or so. And I was like, "Oh, what's it going to be like? What's North Carolina going to be like? This should just you know a new place, something I've never been, stuff I've never seen." It felt exactly like the stretch of. Interstate 91, for those of you that you know, you know, runs between Vermont and Connecticut. Just the stretch in Massachusetts. It's straight, it's flat, it's boring. There's a lot of billboards and a lot of just strong. And the whole day, that's all it was. It was long, it was through, it was boring, it was broad. Like 70 right now, it's freezing rain. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad I don't have that. 38 degree rain non stop. Your lizard blood doesn't mesh with it. While Eric was driving from Raleigh to Greensboro, I was reading Smut in my car, waiting in the hotel parking lot. Non werewolf smut, sadly. Yeah, finally, I finally get there and. I was like, wow, this was a really crazy day of travel. Hopefully that's all behind me now. <laughs> oh, we'll get we'll get there. We'll get there. So um But yeah. And a lot of that, you know, I already discussed if you were hanging out on, on hang time. But we were able to have hang time, which was which was fun. And then um, Sunday morning, uh, went out to Waffle House, which was my second time being to a Waffle House. I didn't see anybody getting a fight, so disappointed there. But it was fine. It was fine. So that's one of those, one of those many myriad of things that just kind of don't exist in my area of the world. The closest equivalent, we just have Denny's, but of course they don't want Denny's within like 100 miles of where I live. Randomly shut down. One day they were in business, and that day they weren't. And they just. One of those instances where they closed down and they didn't tell the people that were there. They just showed up, and the doors were locked, and there was a for sale sign on the lawn. Yeah. It was also Wadi's second time in a Waffle House. 
Yeah, some Indian leftovers. That was yeah, and that's uh yeah, when we got there at the hotel and everything, it's like all we're doing for food, what I'm gonna do. So we ordered Indian food, which is really good. But, but yeah, so then uh Wadi had to depart and at that point I had a little chunk of time in there. So this is Sunday afternoon at this point, and the extent of what I had planned for travel went through 40 months! See, the geek to just re enlisted for 40 months. 40 months. Woo. What was that? What was that? <laughs> that was so cool! I, I mean, yeah, I, you like that new thing I just did that, that I totally spent ages implementing? Yeah. <laughs> hey, thank you, Seek, for triggering that amazing bit of. What the fuck that was it was awesome. No one else's resub did. Oh well. I appreciate it regardless. Thank you, sir. So everything I'd done, the flights I had, the hotel I booked, the rental car, and everything. All that just centered around um going to Greensboro to see Sting's last match. After that, um, I had no idea what I was doing next. I had nothing booked. I had no idea if I, how I was getting home. And the path I took to get there, you cannot take in the other direction. So I could not take a plane from Raleigh to Philly to Boston because they don't run that way. So, um, so but that little chunk of time in there on the afternoon, my chance to sort of figure out, what am I actually going to do? Because i got to do something. So... Plunk around looking at um, looking at different flights, what left from rally, what time, where it was going, um, what sort of fun I could get into, and of course we've talked for years and years and years about you know go back to Puerto Rico, go back to Puerto Rico. That's what I so. It entailed leaving pretty damn early Monday morning, but it all, it all went through my flight path and everything, so all old taxes and fees, it was $52 or less, so I, I booked it, and then I found this hotel, which um, that was going to be my biggest concern of coming back to Puerto Rico is like a lot of hotel here. I wanted something that was on the beach that I could just like Uber here from the airport and not have to worry about going somewhere else. But a lot of stuff that was on the beach is too fucking expensive. But this is a little boutique independent hotel. And it was like $150 not $150 Thirty dollars the first night, hundred and fifty dollars the second night, something because different nights have different prices compared to like the Marriott, which is two doors down, which is five hundred and fifty dollars a night. So, so booked a couple nights here. This is a super nice place, and I was like, okay, I know, I don't know. We're going to we're going when we drop off our rental car in the morning. We are going to Puerto Rico. How wild is that? So, at that point, it is time to go to the Greensboro Coliseum. So, <laughs> yikes forever for $5.50. I can almost a month of apartment. Yeah, seriously. I can see if you're, like, splitting it with, a, with three or four people, and you're all just sort of cramming into the room. I can see doing that, but... It's also like, and the Marriott's also a casino. There's apparently like 
three casinos that I could like I could stand here and throw a rock and hit a casino, which I also didn't know. Not that I went to, not that I went to them or anything, but um, so I went to the Coliseum. I stopped at a random gas station, see if I could find myself some pib because I also like. I mean, I wasn't looking too hard, but I wasn't able to find myself any any pib. So I was a little bummed about that, but um, and then I went to the Coliseum, twenty five bucks to park, and. It's also the first time in my life I've seen, like, legit tailgating. A lot of the events I've gone to, maybe it's just not that big, not that, not such a thing in the Northeast. There's so much tailgating. I was like, wild. Just in the movies. And then I stood in one of the longest times I've ever stood in to get into the building. Like, it was so long, but anyway, got in there, got to my seat, was surprised that I wasn't actually in the nosebleeds. I thought I was, but I wasn't, but my partially obstructed seat was really at the midway point. Um, I was angled in a way so that nobody could stand in front of me and get my view. The only downside was I couldn't see the, I was technically behind the stage, but I was like, to the side so i couldn't see the stuff that they were showing on the screens on the stage i could see the back of the screens but but that was again whatever <laughs> um it was a really long show so it started like that and they had an hour per show this started at seven yeah it started at seven um I also just there was so many people and merch as for so long and everything at the time I was able to get to where I could buy something. All of the you know, I was here for retirement match, every merch 